ACC on ESPN from Colonial Life Arena in Columbia, South Carolina. An SEC regular season title hangs in the balance tonight. Fourth ranked Tennessee can clinch it. Number 17 South Carolina still has a lot to say and is looking to split it. Five teams still have a shot to tie for this thing. We could have pure chaos should the Gamecocks get a win. But first, this atmosphere, this arena is on fire for good reason. Tom Hart alongside Jimmy Dykes. Who would have thunk it, huh? South Carolina picked dead last. Yeah. Tennessee picked first. And now they meet with a chance for a title. Yeah, what a story, huh, South Carolina? How about this? This is the biggest men's game in the history of this building. South Carolina, a magical season right now with a major opportunity. And think about for Tennessee. They win tonight, Tom. They're going to lock up the SEC regular season title. And like I've been telling the college basketball world, they will be a one seed on that line if they win tonight. A lot of at stake right now in Colonial Life Arena. Another fantastic atmosphere in the SEC. And we get one of the best scorers in the game in Dalton Connect. He's averaging 25 points a game in conference play, but South Carolina did a magnificent job against him in the first matchup in Knoxville until he exploded late. Michi Johnson is coming off back-to-back 20-point games. He has been red hot. He led South Carolina to a come-from-behind win against Florida on Saturday. The town is ready. The crowd is ready. The building is ready. And oh, by the way, it seems that some orange snuck into the building tonight yeah, as well. Absolutely. You noticed it. Yeah, Fall Nation is, has shown up. With pretty good numbers over there behind that Tennessee bench. Some games feel different prior to tip. This is one of them. Tennessee has won six straight. South Carolina has won three in a row. And the Volunteers, under the direction of Zakai Ziegler, control the tip. It's already loud. Connect got a step on Davis. Aggressive taken off the window. I want to say they held him to 31 in the first matchup. And that's because he had to go on a flurry to get to that 31 late. Here's the starting five for South Carolina. It's been relatively consistent. Zachary Davis was the defensive standout in the Florida win on Saturday. And we know this about Tennessee. They are one of the best defensive teams in the country. South Carolina going to try to pound this thing inside early to set the rules of how they want the game to be played. H.G. E. Johnson downhill got to the rim and snuck it in. H.G. E. Johnson playing like an all-conference guard. If you can't drive the ball through contact tonight, you can't drive the ball. It's going to be a physical fist fight, body blow game for 40 minutes. Tennessee has had only two starting lineups over the course of this season. Once Akai Ziegler was fully recovered from his ACL, he took over a point. Here he is getting a touch. And uh, Adu on the baseline in a mid-range. Tom, he has really developed that 15-foot jump shot. It's such a high release, a trademark of Rick Barnes, big guys, and a really good find by Double Z Earl. Wow. Behind the back, Michi Jackson left it short. Callum Murray Boyles had it stripped. Great effort by the South Carolinian, Josiah Jordan James from the Low Country. Santiago Best could be cut off. South Carolina's focus in the first meeting in Knoxville was simply to stay in front of the basketball, and that helped Tennessee to its only home conference loss of the season. Talon Cooper in that game exploded for 18. He is a real concern for this Tennessee coaching staff. Cooper off of the max screen. Hammers into the corner for three. And it's Ziegler with the board. And Ziegler, a point guard that wants to push and get the ball to the elbow quickly. There's the elbow touch. Good things happen off of the action. James back to Ziegler, a veteran Tennessee team aiming for a number one seed in the NCAA tournament in their first regular season title since Bruce Pearl was the coach and Chris Lofton was the shooter. That three-point shot is very important for Tennessee tonight, Tom. They come in making nine a game at 35%. What they're doing for Carolina, Michi Johnson. Best could be out in front. Yeah, Dalton Connect has to have help tonight offensively. He had 31 in the first matchup. They've got to have more balance in their offense and a really good start by Adu answering that question. Coach, I've got his help tonight. Adu scored six as part of a key 14 to four second half run in Tuscaloosa on Saturday. There was no panic by Tennessee in that ball game from the staff to the players to the timeouts. 
Very mature old team, Tennessee, built for a Final Four run. You mentioned their incredible defense, number three in the country, defensive efficiency. Carolina has started just one for seven from the floor. Connect the board. And good game rebounding right by the guys in orange. Nobody stops Dalton Connect. Adu yanks it down. Another touch for the big. He's working on B.J. Mack. Size advantage for Jonas Adu. Turn around. Hoodie. Nope. Boy, good job by Mack to hold his ground and build a foundation using the wood as his friend as an inside defender. Watch out. On the perimeter. I say watch out because B.J. Mack is that stretch four guy that can ignite this building. Connect puts them back in their seats with a deep three. <laughs> One guy's igniting the building, the other guy's putting water on it. There was a huge three for Mack a moment ago, just one for his previous 10 from deep over two games. Lamont Paris said unequivocally, we are better when he makes a three. He plays better when he gets that first one to go. Switch for Cooper. Connect helps out and an open three. Come again, one and done by South Carolina. All five guys fighting that defensive glass for Tennessee early. What a pass. Adu couldn't find it though. And a Tennessee turnover. Five of South Carolina's nine attempts have come from deep early on. They trail by four. on Rocky Top. Dalton Connect score, but it came late. Gamecocks made him work. 11 of 24 from the floor, but they couldn't contain him late. Connect scored 12 of his game high 31 in the final two minutes and 26 seconds. South Carolina had a good feel for the game. At that point, Salon Cooper with his huge three with 40 seconds left in the game. Carolina upset then number five Tennessee 63 59 they're one of five schools in the country with a road win against a top five team and that's really I think Jimmy where a lot of people took notice and said hold on this South Carolina team is for real yeah they have played South Carolina with a massive massive chip on their shoulder ever since the SEC media days where they were picked dead last and Coach came back home to his guys and said, well, you're picked dead last for two reasons. Either they think the coach stinks or the players stink. And it's on you because I know I can coach. And, man, they have carried that with them all season long. I just love their collectiveness right now, their belief in what they're doing. These two programs, it's a big statement to say who has the best culture in college basketball. I don't know how you judge that. There's not any better than what these two programs have right now. I do know that. Well, if Carolina stinks, I'd love to stink because the 13 win turnaround is the best in school history. No odor. A 12 and 4 conference record. And with a win tonight, they can deny uh, Tennessee of an outright championship and they can play for that number one seed going into the weekend. Cooper got caught too deep, gave it up, and Murray Burrows with the jam. He's coming off a double-double against Florida, 15 and 11. He plays bully ball, that freshman, 30 and white. And he was good on good. Meshack matched up in that one-on-one -on -one battle. Miles Studi in the game for the first time. We haven't seen him in a couple of weeks. Suffered a knee injury. Also missed time earlier this season with a shoulder injury. Connect to the free throw line and he dumps it down low. Toby Owaka with the bucket and she just entered. Found the versatility of Dalton Connect. I mean five or six different ways on synergy that he gets most of his action as a pick and roll handler is fourth. Man, he is so versatile on the offensive end. Jacoby Wright helping run the point for South Carolina right now with Cooper on the floor. Michi Johnson getting a breather. Deep three. Got it! Salon Cooper is here. He shoots it too good, man. You cannot go under. You cannot be late. No airspace for 55 in wide if you're Tennessee. Talking with the Tennessee coaching staff, they said he may be the most viable player on this South Carolina team. They've gotten the best of them already in a game and a half, and Ziegler with an answer. When you're small, you have to have the floater game, and this kid's got it. Zakai Ziegler is the most feared 5'9 guy in all of college basketball. Mayshack guarding Cooper. He is a defensive wizard, but Cooper used the screen for Murray Boyles. Here's a touch from Mack from deep, working on James. He's already made one three tonight. Here comes the double. He spins away from it. 
And it's Meshack on the rebound. Tennessee will make you take some tough guarded shots. You got to have patience. Whoa! Wow, what a pass, but James couldn't flush it. Connect through that one from just a step past half court. And now he aggressively takes it down the lane, and it's going the other way. As we know, it's very difficult to draw a charge in college basketball this year. And if you charge, that's on you. Dalton Connect made his mind up at the 23 foot mark. If that defender is in legal guarding position before that pivot foot goes down, that's a well, that's a 50-50 call that all season long we've seen go the other way. A good break early for South Carolina. Mitchie Johnson back on the floor for the Gamecocks. Ohio State transfer. Honored before the game on senior night. Here is Jacoby Wright. Boy, a lot of threes going up for South Carolina. Seven of their 14 attempts from deep. Elby stops James and he'll go to the free throw line. Ends up being a foul on the fantastic freshman Colin Murray Boyle. As solid Tom as South Carolina's half court defense is, they have been exposed in conference play with teams that will run it right down their throat. And so far, Tennessee has figured that out. They are very aggressive, all gas, no breaks, ripping that thing off the defensive glass. Correction, that foul is on Josh Gray. Here's James, 80% at the free throw line on the season. You can catch five college basketball games Saturday at ESPN on the app. It starts at noon Eastern and includes these two Sonic blockbusters. Number 14, Kansas, goes into Houston to take on the number one team in the country. And then our Saturday prime matchup is Tobacco Road's finest. It's Carolina and Duke, a top 10 showdown at 6.30 Eastern on ESPN and everything available on the app. I love what Armando Baycott said about the University of North Carolina, how much he loves and has loved being a Tar, tar Heel. Talking to Josiah Jordan James prior to this game, I brought that up and he said, I'll tell you what, Mondo doesn't like love North Carolina any more than I love Tennessee. Just terrific ambassadors for college ball and the university. Well, Baycott had a double-double in the first matchup, 25 and 10. Right cut off, floater short, tipped out to Johnson. Shot clock late, and a three skips off the rim. Jimmy, and we got a foul on the rebound at Tumbe Alwaka. Is South Carolina being too reliant on the three in the first eight minutes of this game? I, I think they are. They are at their best, South Carolina. When their half-court possessions, Tom, are heavy on the passing and light on the bounce of the ball. And Lamont Paris will be the first to tell you, we want possessions where we have six or seven passes and only two or three bounces. That's not the ratio they played with so far. They chose Ganey for that personal foul. Here's Davis, another three, and that one's off the mark. It's almost like Tennessee is baiting them into putting up all these threes. They're 34% as a team, but so far tonight, just two for nine. Volunteers lead by five. For tonight's Need to Know, brought to you by the USPS Ground Advantage, we could have pure chaos and a five-way tie for the SEC regular season title. Here's what needs to happen. Tennessee needs to lose out here tonight, and then Kentucky on Saturday. South Carolina needs to win, lose at Mississippi State. Auburn and Alabama both need to win their Saturday games, and Kentucky needs to win out. All of this is perfectly plausible, Jimmy Dykes, and five at the top would uh, certainly be chaotic. No, absolutely it could. Now, you can silence all that graphic if you're Tennessee tonight by winning at South Carolina. And going back to your point about South Carolina has already fired up nine three-point shots. The reason why is that guy who's going to be a first-time first ballot Hall of Fame coach, Rick Barnes, defensively, they smother the ball. They call it bear hug the ball. Tennessee does and they are gap heavy. They are full body gap heavy right now in South Carolina taking away those driving gaps. So saying if you can beat us with jump shots so be it that you're not going to get downhill you're not going to get to the free throw line in this game. Gaining bad entry pass and a bad post up both to blame and it's a turnover by the way Rick Barnes saying this is the best I've ever seen this league in the nine years he's been the head coach. And this Tennessee team has five consecutive wins against top 25 opponents for the second time in school history. You have to go back to the late 60s to find a comparable run. Tom, think about it. We've had 10 teams out of the SEC at some point ranked in the top 25 this year. Currently, five of the top 17 teams in the AP poll come out of this league. Mm. See what Tennessee can do against South Carolina here with a shot clock of five. Zachary Davis for three, and that one finds its home. Well, eventually you're going to have some open looks. you got to knock him down. Zachary Davis has really grown as a player. 
Full gap help. They come off of Davis. He makes them pay. Ganey, who's been a streaky shooter on the season, gives it up to Kinnett, who's got five points in the first nine. It is loud. Jumper off the mark, but another offensive rebound. Tobey Wakano rebounded by Davis. Carolina looking for the tie, and Michi Johnson rolls it home to lock to 15. At some point against Tennessee, you just got to size your guy up and win your battle. Really well done by Michi Johnson. Here's Connect from the elbow. And a foul on the rebound will be charged to Tobey Awaka. Man, we have seen this type of atmosphere all winter long in the SEC. The building is hot. And at some point, you got to go and drive it against one of the better defenders in all of college ball, Meshack, who is a monster at Alabama. That is just good on good. And advantage, Michi Johnson. Hey, how about the South Carolina women's team in the building tonight? They're supposed to be in Greenville already for the women's tournament that's starting this week. Don Staley said, no, 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 no. We're staying for this game. It's big. She's a big fan. She's a great supporter of Lamont Paris. In fact, she rushed the floor after the win against yeah. Kentucky earlier this season. Think about her program. Don's, Don's kids have not lost a regular season game since December 30th, 2021. Jeez. Davis right off of Vescovine. Davis may have gotten his finger jammed. Here's Ziegler. Transition three. And Ganey finds the rebound. You know, we just had Alabama last night. The Alabama coaching staff raved about the job that Tennessee did winning all the 50-50 balls and the blue collar points that Tennessee got which is a staple of Nate Oates' team. Yeah, I think, what, there was 44 loose balls in that game between Tennessee and Alabama, and Alabama only got to 16 of them. Again, that, that AD 15-foot space-out shot has really helped this Tennessee offense. Cooper with the kick. Here's Mack for three. South Carolina not afraid to run some clock. 348th in the country in time of possession. Adu. Finds its home. Tom, but it all started with Ganey winning the elbow. And I go back to Jordan Bone, who was on one of those great teams for Rick Barnes. They always talked about win the elbow, win the paint touch early, and Adu just filters in from the weak side off of it. Cooper shakes Ziegler, then gets called for the push off. It is hard to knock off the pressure of a squirrel. Zakai Ziegler is a squirrel on the ball, just so quick and so low, and just a little bit of that arm extension by Cooper is why it gets called. Really, there's not a lot of contact there, but because he extends that that ball side arm, right arm. You going to watch the Oscars Sunday night? Not planning on it. I don't know if a squirrel has ever won Best Actor. <laughs> but Ziegler knows all the tricks of the trade, doesn't he? Here he is off the curl. Another tap out, another offensive rebound, the sixth of the game for Tennessee. Mack comes out to help. Ziegler from way downtown. South Carolina hasn't scored in about two and a half minutes. And Ziegler gets whistled for his first. Tom, it is ridiculously hard to get in this inside the teeth of either one of these defenses. You've got to get that ball going side to side. Try to find the third side of the floor, play against the closeout. Ziegler comes from behind right there, misses ball initially, and gets body contact. Tough call, right call. Ziegler, two steals a game, fourth best in the SEC. Murray Boyles with a touch on the baseline, 10 on the shot clock. Here's right. This kid goes left and lefter. There it is. <laughs> and the lefter ends up. With a reverse layup. If he beats you, make him beat you going the other way. Watch out. Good hands and a Carolina takeaway. Looking to tie it once again, but Carolina has not led this game. 
Wright dumps it off. Mack pump fake and a finish with tie 19. It all started with Vescovy, who's a very good defender, opening up his hips and just giving the drive alley to South Carolina. Here's Ganey. Got it. And he quiets the crowd again. What a scoring punch off the bench has Ganey been. And his cutter game has really developed. I mean, he had some scoring cuts against Alabama that were fantastic from that off guard position. Ganey had been ice cold from deep, just one for 14 over the previous five. And now he commits the foul on the drive. Second on Ganey, three point Tennessee lead here in the first half in Columbia. One of Joey Brackett's last four in. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Huge night in college basketball. A big one here at Colonial Life Arena. What did you see from Santiago Vescovy defensively? Well, it, this is not common for South for uh, Tennessee to allow a straight line drive. 25 in Orange Vescovy right there. When he opens his hips, it's almost like he's expecting that other defender to be there to, you know, choke off those drives. A little bit of a miscommunication. But, man, Tennessee, they are so good at squaring you up. Uncommon for Vescovy to give a, a straight line drive. DJ Mack looking for a post up on a Waka who was just bear hugging him a moment ago on the inbounds. Shot clock in single digits again. Mack banging. Gets cut off. Gets denied. And the loose ball is corralled by the boys in orange. Here comes Tennessee leading by three. How about the force of a Waka down low again to make sure the wood is his friend. Never left the ground. Just rock solid foundation. Ziegler looking to get it inside. Walker left it short. And a rebound. Loose ball belongs to Studi. And Matt getting frustrated by the physical play inside from Big Tobey Awaka at 6'8, 250. DJ Mack with the screen here. Gets it back. Again, a long possession for South Carolina. Four on defense from James, and another block for Tennessee. How about JJJ just completely eating up that right paw? Here's Vescovy. And now Ziegler off balance. Well, oh, this is turned into an absolute rock fight here. Reminiscent of the matchup on Rocky Top, which was low scoring. Corner three, no. Vescovy comes out of there with it. Tennessee's got numbers. They gotta keep the ball hot. James fouled on his way in. Tom, you can never be wrong when you know you have numbers to just drive the ball. I mean, the one mistake you can do is overpass it, allow the numbers to catch back up with the play. High IQ play by Josiah Jordan James. Just drive it to the rim and force the action. So Josiah Jordan James to the free throw line. Two for two from the stripe so far tonight. Tomorrow, the SEC Women's Tournament continues on the SEC Network. AM and Mississippi State with the first game of the day at noon Eastern. Tennessee owns 17 titles. South Carolina's seven. Seven of the last nine years. South Carolina's Don Staley has left with the trophy. By the way, a tournament up in Greenville. It's only about an hour and a half from Columbia. The way Jimmy drives three hours. James gets another free throw. <laughs> what? We our hotel is four minutes from the arena. Okay, it took us 14 to get here. I appreciate you driving this. Thank you. It was raining. I couldn't get my hair wet. <laughs> Another scoring drop for South Carolina. Yeah, that pressure can eat you up, man. And Rick Barnes's guys are they, they can clamp down on you. They stick their nose on your number. If you can't own your space and get yourself open, it can be a long night. Dalton Connect had five early. He hasn't been forcing it lately, but this is a guy who can take over the game at any moment. Where he can also accept the double team and be a ball mover like he did against Alabama. Nothing selfish at all. Oh my God, that was aggressive. Here comes Carolina the other way. Last four possessions, two blocks, a turnover, and a miss from deep for South Carolina. Carolina's got to move the ball. This is not who they are. They are not a over the dribble 
type team. They are a pass and move the ball team. Shooting just 32 percent. Tennessee second in the country in field goal percentage defense. And a rip and another turnover. Just give it to me, huh? To my point about over dribbling, just drive it right where there's nowhere to go with the ball. Mayshack working on right. Going back into him. Here's Ganey. Shot clock at 10. Ganey gets it poked away. And it's taken away by Wright. Tennessee ran no offense that possession. They guarded themselves. Transition three. Sturdy. First bucket in a couple of weeks for Sturdy. It's a big one. Connect for three. Again, he answers. He is a silencer. And Tom, he is money on the right third of the floor. He can score from anywhere, but he is absolute money on those catches on the right side. Right working on Ganey. Out to Murray Boyle. Cooper lost connect. Another offensive rebound, another three. And once again, fool's gold for Carolina. Just four of 16 from deep. Yeah, South Carolina has lost their mind offensively at times in this game. They've got to settle in. It's a huge stage, a monster opportunity. they got to remember how they got here. More than half of their attempts have come from deep in this game. Mayshack guarded by Cooper. Shot clock at five. Connect and launch it. Mayshack didn't hit him. And a spinning move falls off the rim. Right, wide open, Studi. Mm. And 16 of 29 attempts from deep. Tom Rick's going to slow his guys down. I know it's a 27 to 22 game. He's going to slow it down, get a play call right now, and get this ball moving. Connect will be option one, two, and probably three. A reach in on Miles Studi is his second personal. Studi's three gave him a big lift. Yeah, well, if you run bad offense, you're going to have bad conversion defense. That's exactly what happened at Tennessee a couple of possessions ago. On the right side, the rise, release, and rotation as good as anyone we have in the college game from Connect. You know what I mean, Dykes? It's <laughs> unbelievable. I thought we were friends. I, I'm going to block Seth Greenberg's phone number. Well, I tell you who you're not going to block is a shot of Dalton Connect. No chance. Well, why is he hard to guard? He has pro lift on his jump shot, and it's every single time. He's a fast, physical, really long finisher. Tremendous on the left side of the rim, by the way. The mentality of Kevin Durant, this, the shot is never too big for this kid, and his work ethic is relentless. Tom, before I started in TV, I spent a couple of years as an NBA scout for a guy named Gary Wortman with the Seattle organization. He told me, find me a guy that even when you cover him, you can't cover him. Mm. That is Dalton Connect. Yeah. And he exploded on the scene, transferring in from Northern Colorado. A kick, and they're going to get a trip. It, it was a Gray's number, though. Indeed, it was a kick, so 20 seconds on the clock. And Connect is always the threat on these baseline out-of-bounds under. Look at this. You are a heck of a scout, Jimmy Dykes. Tommy can't let him do it. You have to force him one way, and it certainly can't be to the ball side of the floor. That is just money. Again, that pro lift on his jump shot is NBA ready right now. Jimmy, he shot 36% from deep his first year at Northern Colorado, then 38% his second, and now he's at 40% playing at the highest level, and that number gets even higher in SEC play. It's unconscionable how much he has improved. Davis misses the three. Tennessee is on quite a run. Six nothing volunteers, and the lead is now eight. Connect is averaging 24 and a half points in SEC play. Zach Eady is averaging 25.3 in Big Ten play. It's not a stretch for this guy to be in the conversation for National Player of the Year. They lost him again. Yeah. He makes him pay again. He is so good on the exit cut. I mean, he goes inside to pop outside. The one guy you can't lose, South Carolina, has let him get loose in the last 45 seconds. Under a minute to play, Tennessee on a 9 nothing run, and the Volunteers aiming for an outright regular season title. And a hard screen puts Vescovy on the deck, 
and results in the foul on Stooney, which is his third. But if you don't hard screen Tennessee, you're not going to get open. So you might get one or two of those a ball game. Here's a South Carolina. You could he we could hear this courtside. Oh side. man, the pop, yeah, by Studi just pivoting into the path of Sonny Vescovy. Meanwhile, South Carolina in danger of being held to a season low in first half points. It was 28. They're sitting at 22 on 30 percent shooting. Tom, those last two jump shots by Dalton Connect. This is unguardable stuff. Watch number three in orange. Just that's too easy. Zach Davis just gets caught on the inside and. The very next possession, the exit cut, the rise, an unblockable three-point shooter. Hard to guard. Here he is again. And he wants a ball screen, but he's always a threat with the product to the pull. Goes from Gervais Street that time and left it short. Shot clock is still on, three-second difference. Wright has James on him. Tennessee has scored 14 of the last 17 in this game. How about Tennessee only five fouls. They have defended their backsides off without fouling in this game. Big one for Michi Johnson. South Carolina needed it. Ten left in the half. Ziegler with the screen from Connect. Another screen for him. Here he is. Ziegler with the drive. Crossed over Cooper. Slashes it down. It was connected then Ziegler from K to Z. Tennessee is dominating this first half. Remember that shot. It is uncanny how often the shot made right before the half is the ultimate difference maker at the end of a ball game. Ziegler makes something out of nothing. He lowers his shoulder without fouling to create space. Small guards their entire life have understood how to get their own off. And a big one by Double Z to finish off the half. 16 to 5 run to close the half for Connect and Company. Time to get you stood along my former best friend Seth Greenberg. Here's Kevin Connors. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Tom Hart, and a good start in Columbia. Tactosa Colonial Life Arena. This is the SEC on ESPN, and the Gamecocks looking for their first home win against a top five team since number one Kentucky with John Wall came in here. 2010 and got outplayed by Devin Downey. That was a big win for Darren Horn and company. They need to come back to try and match that. Tom Hart alongside Jimmy Dykes. They also got to figure out something in regard to Dalton Connect. They guarded him well in the first matchup, not so well the latter half of this first half. No, South Carolina has to compete offensively in this second 20 minutes. They got to compete and get after Dalton Connect on the defensive end of the floor. The guy absolutely is a bucket. And it's 6 6, big broad shoulders. You just can't let him run into a shot and get a rhythm, Tom. And, and he's a such. I don't think there's a better threat in college basketball off the out of bounds under than Dalton Connect. And the feel that Ziegler has for those exit cuts made by Dalton Connect, always on time and on target. But his versatility is so hard to handle when you break down his entire game. The building has stayed hot, although yep. South Carolina is down. The building has stayed hot. They're trying to knock off Tennessee and keep this SEC regular season race alive. Tennessee trying to shut the door and walk out of here with an SEC regular season crown. By the way, there's some heat in the building, right? We saw Mitch Kupchak is in the building. Alex English is here. And some balls for life that are big time. Look at Al Wilson, national champion, sitting next to Grant Williams, the two-time SEC player of the year. There's a seven time NBA champ and former ACC player of the year 1976 with his Carolina blue on. You know that this is the game of the night, huh? No doubt. And like, like a lot of volunteer fans, Grant Williams, one of my all time favorite college basketball players, and how he established the DNA, the, the toughness, the belief, the personality of how Tennessee is supposed to play the game. It's been passed down. Through the hands and the eyes of Josiah Jordan James, Santi Vescovi. Here's DJ Mack for three. He had a big one in the first half, but Carolina just couldn't find any rhythm offensively. Heard Seth talk about it. Get open, run more. Well, it's not easy to do against the stout defense of Tennessee, but South Carolina has taken 18 three point shots in this game, Tom. They only average 23. They're already at 18. They've got to drive the ball. They have to compete going downhill in this second half. No free throw attempt by the Gamecocks in the first 20 minutes. Mm. Also a result of Mack on connect. Interesting matchup. Trying to use his girth to get inside on the block. South Carolina is one of the most blocked teams in college basketball. Tennessee's got three of them now. Connect, no. Adu picks it up. 
And Carolina may have gotten away with a foul. Carolina 309th in the country 13 percent of their two point attempts get blocked. It's because they don't have great size inside although Colin Murray Boyles has brought a little bit more lately starting the last 14 games. Mack left his man behind with a hard screen. Another miss at the rim. Here's James. Tend to slow it down and run some offense. Connect guarded by Zachary Davis. Went behind him and Connect turns it into a mid range jump on the play call, which for Dalton Connect off of what I call NASCAR action. He's coming with speed into a turn, hesitated a little bit, but man, that pull up jump shot. He has the last 11 points for Tennessee. Hooper out to Michi Johnson. Got by two volunteers. And now a third, and he banks it in. Okay, so now that's competing on the offensive end. We did not see that out of South Carolina in the first 20 minutes. Mack had a forceful drive, followed up by Michi Johnson. Now South Carolina's playing like South Carolina's supposed to play. Big indicator for Carolina is their lack of assists. Only five. Connect again. Adu the rebound and earns the whistle inside. Dalton Connect comes on a NASCAR cut. Speed into the turn right there. Now he hesitates as he gets into the turn, but man, you gotta eat him up. You can't let him just easy dribble into an elbow jump shot. Now watch Michi Johnson. This is competing off on offense. Goes strong off of two feet right into the chest of Jonas Adu. More of that for South Carolina in the second half is what Lamont Paris is calling for. Adu with the free throw. He is. Picking up where he left off, Adu was the main offensive threat in the first 10 minutes of this game. Eight early for the junior out of Durham, North Carolina. He's coming off of a 12.2 block performance with seven boards and a win Saturday at Alabama, which puts Tennessee in sole possession of first place in the SEC. If you're going to be a legit national title contender this year, you've got to have a guy at that post position that can handle the bigs that are out there waiting on you. Guys like Zach Eady and Hunter Dickinson, Mondo Baycott on down the line, and Adu can more than hold his own. Johnson looking for an assist. Murray Boyles with the finish. Again, aggressive, competing drive by South Carolina, keeping life in the building. Really well done. Connect went to the deck. Ball stays on the other side of the floor. Here's Vescovy. Now with 10 seconds of the shot clock. Direct pass to James and Cooper with the rebound. Drive it right. Don't settle for a jump shot here for South Carolina. Johnson doing just that. Pump fake got connect up. And he left the layup short. South Carolina 32% shooting in this game. 4 of 18 from 3. Connect fighting through screens. Good pressure on the ball and a Carolina takeaway. Dangerous save. Mack gets it. Mack's got Ziegler on him. They get him to the post. Now he's still got a guard on him. Great hands by Vescovy. Turns it into a tie up. It'll go the other way. Tom, how about the quick switch back by Santi Vescovy understanding? I'm a better low post defender than Zakai Ziegler. Why? Because the hot hands of Vescovy defensively. Time of it over the last few minutes to take a look at the tail end of that last play. After Santiago Vescovy stripped the ball and they both went to the floor for it. He caught an inadvertent elbow right there, then maybe a poke of the eye afterwards from Vescovy. But Jimmy. Santiago Vescovy's ability to recognize what was happening paid off. Yeah, watch up, Tom. Zakai Ziegler, five in orange, was initially mismatched to B.J. Mack, and Vescovy calls it off knowing I'm a better, bigger low post defender, but I also am a thief, man, with those quick hands. And that's that coach on the floor stuff by Santiago Vescovy. We saw him actually in the timeout against Alabama drawing up a play, making a point to Tobey Awaka. Rick Barnes doesn't just hand that draw board to anyone and Vescovy got it and made a point it just speaks to the culture 
and the belief that Rick Barnes has and the trust he has with his older guys, Vescovy, Josiah, Jordan James, Adu Ziegler. He had three steals Vescovy did in the Alabama game. I had an SEC coach tell me a couple of weeks ago that Santiago Vescovy is off of our scouting report. He just doesn't impact the game offensively for us to be concerned. But he impacts the game in every other way. Here's what you're talking about. Yeah, this is late in the Alabama game. And they're, they're drawing up a play, and Tobey Awaka wasn't real sure about what they were going to do with it. And sometimes players understand players better than players understand coaches. And Vescovy took that draw board. How can you let this oh happen? Oh, my goodness. goodness. Tom, how can you let that happen again? He's the most feared guy on the baseline out of bounds under. And you give him either direction to go, he eats you up with a dunk shot at the rim. He's got 18 in the previous matchup. He got going late. And He's been cooking since well about the 10 minute mark of the first half now. Tom, that is all on South Carolina. You're not physical with him and force him one way and dictate what you want him to do. He will eat you up. Carolina, its largest deficit at home this season is 13 in the first half. Still, he's able to beat the buzzer. They're going to look at it and double check. It was really close. Studi playing for the first time in three games after injuring his knee against LSU. Can't. You go by the horn. If you can't hear the horn over there on the review, review right now, can you see the clock or the red light? South Carolina needs all the help it can get in this game. Mont Paris has taken his team picked dead last the previous basket league. is no good did not get out of his hands you heard the announcement from Joe Lindsay that's the right call it's still on his fingertips when that clock hits 0.0 you made Studi a shooter have to do it off the bounce you'll live with that if you're Tennessee's defense You watch Dalton collect, connect a lot this season. Yeah. What's the best way to guard him? He is getting physical now. The stood. He pushed him off. Found the corner. Here he is. And he misses the three. Is, is there any right way? Well, yeah, there's, a, there's a best way. We know the wrong way. Yeah. You, just saw you have to be physical with him, but you cannot let this guy operate off baseline out of bounds under. That's all on South Carolina to not be physical before the ball is ever handed to the official. Forcing him one way, understanding you got one of the most potent, powerful, impactful offensive players in the country coming at you. Carolina in a two and a half minute scoring drought. Lon Cooper had a huge game the first time. Student playing with confidence and he strokes in a three. Connect just a little bit late, getting out to the shooter. on the defensive end trying to guard connect James collects it yeah the studio right now is checking connect up top being very physical with every cut that connect tries to make James denied pulled down by Gray reverse that ball get the other third best be went for the steal Murray Boyles shares it Seven footer Josh Gray blows the bunny, gets it back. Triple clutches and gets a whistle and it's charged of Jonas Adu. Scratch at Josiah Jordan James with the foul. The first team foul by Tennessee this half. And South Carolina has struggled the entire game finishing. Adu got all ball. They get the whistle on Josiah Jordan James. Coming for Josh Gray this Saturday, a little bit of everything for you. Second game of our ABC NHL doubleheader. Bruins host the Penguins at 3 Eastern. The primetime men's college hoop game will be a top 10 tobacco road matchup. Carolina at Cameron to take on number nine Duke at 6:30 on ESPN. Also in primetime over on ABC with the Celtics and Suns at 8:30. And the stack UFC 299 main card for Miami begins at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN Plus pay-per-view.
That's a lot. Continue to watch the off-ball action to connect. Follow tip is denied, and Gray gets it. You know the next event in this building this weekend, Jimmy Dykes, is the world's toughest rodeo. That describes what's going on between Studi and Connect oh, right no now. Doubt. It is a physical matchup off the ball for Connect. Studi ends up with a takeaway. Rick Barnes beside himself. Now starting to fight back in this second half with under 13 to go. And the crowd has been whipped into a ladder. Murray boils the bucket. He will bully ball you. And all of a sudden, it's a six point game. This building is hot once again. Timeout, Tennessee. 6 0 South Carolina run. SEC regular season title hanging in the balance. And Alex English, who led the NBA in scoring in the decade of the 80s, Gamecock in the building tonight. Grant Williams. Yeah, guys, you need to turn it to ESPN2. It's a big game. Two time SEC player of the year next to Al Wilson. Don Staley keeping tabs on this one. Her team undefeated in the SEC before they head up to Greenville. Yeah, it's tight. They need some offense, though, here in the last 12 42. And Mitch Kupchak, NBA champion. I played against South Carolina back in the ACC days when he was ACC player of the year 1976. Jimmy Dykes is in the building tonight. Yeah. This is a big deal. Now you can't hide money. Not talking about me, but the, the, the ice that Don Staley was wearing was awfully impressive. How about this South Carolina team to, to fight back and compete offensively? Tom, think about this. If you're just an okay shooting team, you can't take just okay shots. And that's what South Carolina fell into in the first half. So far in the second half, much better with their shot quality and their downhill game. They got size on connect now, trying to take advantage with speed. Mayshek follows no good. Out of bounds, South Carolina basketball. It's been a three-plus minute drop for Tennessee. And Rick Barnes knows it, so he goes to isolation basketball to Dalton Connect. Seldom does he miss those left-handed long-reach finishes like he just did. Where should Carolina go here? Drive the ball downhill, move, the, move Tennessee's defense first, and continue to drive it. A.C. Johnson cut off by Ganey. Open three to Lon Cooper. Could have peeled the roof back had that one gone in, and it's knocked out of bounds by Davis. Good, by, good job by Ziegler, though. He was absolutely outsized, but his fight for the ball Forces it to go off of South Carolina. What does Rick Barnes do right now in this possession? Does he trust Dalton Connect? Or does he trust his overall offense? Keep the ball moving is what it looks like. The next gonna need an ice bath after this one. He draws a double. A walk of post and hard. Ziegler takes it himself and they get Cooper for the foul. And then a collision. I hope everybody's okay. Talon Cooper came out of the sneakers at the end of that play. Tom, nothing cute, even you, nothing cute, <laughs> nothing finesse, nothing easy is expected in this game with 11.40 to go. We try to clinch the Big 12 with that one on Saturday. Meanwhile, here in the SEC, it is a log jam at the top. Tennessee clinging to a one win lead over both South Carolina and Alabama. They have the tiebreaker against Alabama, South Carolina, though. With a win tonight, could set up a scenario where we have a five way tie for the regular season title, or Tennessee could just win it outright. Another free throw coming for Zakai Ziegler. And I, I am firmly convinced Tennessee should be a one seed right now. If they win this game, all those bracket projections I think will slide Tennessee up to that fourth one seed overall and knock Arizona down. They won five straight against top 25 opponents. They've never beaten three top 15 opponents in three consecutive games in program history. They have an opportunity for that tonight. Shot clock at 10. Here's Saran Cooper. Nope. And connect with the rebound. Carolina needs those to go. Their defense, though, has been sensational. Locking down Tennessee to the tune of no field goals in the last four and a half minutes. But, Tom, that's only the fourth three-point attempt by South Carolina in the second half. They're back to playing their style of basketball. 
Four on four game with connect out front, and Murray Boyle is with the reach in. Did you see how hard Zakai Ziegler fought to make that post entry pass? Dancing with the ball, not to get his own shot, dancing with it to free himself up to deliver that thing to walk on that low block. Smart, tough, high IQ point guard right here. Dance with it, dance with it. Why? I'm trying to feed the low post. Bam, right there. I finally got an angle. That is so well done by Zakai Ziegler. Wow. Off the baseline, out of bounds, another, and he's fouled. Those plays could ultimately be the difference in this game. Not able to choke off this kid's water. I mean, that's just easy money. That's a double stagger up top. And you cannot let him come off of that clean, Tom. So be it if Tennessee dives someone out of it and dunks on you. Don't let this guy run to that left corner and elevate into a foul and a shot. Zachary Davis is the one that got caught up in the stagger screen. What responsibility do his teammates share for not picking him up? It, it's a combination of stuff. Zachary Davis was into his body, but not into his space. And he wasn't physical enough to push him off and be on that path. Lamont Paris talking to his young kid about that. That's just a really tough cover for Zachary Davis. But if, if this guy gets picked off, those other defenders have to knock Dalton Connect off of his scoring path. And now Tennessee picking up full court again. It's a second four-point play of the season for Dalton Connect. He also did it against Texas A&M back in the first week of February. H.E. Johnson around the screen. Pull up jumper way off. Ziegler may have got a piece of it. At least maybe Michi anticipated body contact. They run a double at Connect. Tennessee passes out of it. And it's knocked out of bounds by South Carolina. Got a fingertip on it, I suppose. But sellout crowd of 18,000 here at Colonial Life Arena generally disagrees. If Dalton Connect scores off this baseline out of bounds under, you're going to lose your mind. I, I, may, I may leave. Why not go zone? Would that be helpful? Well, if you play zone out of bounds under, most teams don't. Oh, my gosh. It happened again. And he left that one short. <laughs> How do you even let him get a touch, you know? I was prepared, Jimmy. I would have gone Vin Scully for the final 10-30 if you would have just walked out of the building. <laughs> Tom, the versatility of Connect. I I'm not huge on numbers, but I love these numbers. Coming into tonight, he has taken 84 shots in transition. He's taken 83 shots off of screens, 73 catch-and-shoot jump shots, 53 shots off the pick-and-roll as a handler, and 40 in the ISO game. That's as good of a versatile offensive player we've seen in the college game in a long, long time. South Carolina has figured out the one absolute way to keep him from scoring. He left the game. Here's Cooper. Dancing and pulls for three. Rebound by Mayshack. Empty possession for South Carolina down a dozen. Tom, the question is, why, why do more teams just don't play zone out of bounds under defense. You can't just switch it up for this game specifically for Dalton Connect. I do think coaches should look at what are we giving away and what are we taking away with their out of bounds under defense. Bob from BestQB and wow, can crashing down from high up. Jonas Adu with the bucket, largest lead of the game for Tennessee after the Tennessee timeout, an eight nothing run. He is such a weapon. Adu is a seven footer in that naked corner. Empty roll action. There's no My help. Corner. Yeah, there, well, yeah, there, it's another conversation. But Adu, there's nobody in this corner on the right side to roll off of to disrupt his path. And you get Vescovy going to his left with his left paw as the deliverer of the basketball. Very difficult to stop that action in that empty corner. Mayshack with the foul. Here's Michi Johnson at the free throw line. Junior from Cleveland, Ohio. At a Garfield Heights, he played for. His uncle at Garfield Heights High School, his dad was an assistant coach. His dad was a great player growing up in that same area where he competed with and befriended guy, one of his contemporaries, LeBron James. In fact, Michi was in the locker room after his last game with Cleveland, the 2018 finals, and the loss to Golden State. Best could be with the rebound. I mean, that's a real smile. You can tell LeBron knows Michi. Do you think Michi knew that guy's gonna be on his way to 40,000 points? But no, I'm just saying that that's that's a different picture than like my picture with Michael Jordan. <laughs> like that's just another picture for Michael Jordan. Are you cleaning his wedge for him, Mr. <laughs> Caddy? <laughs> no. I... Shot clock at seven. Ziegler for three. 
Michi Johnson took over the Florida game, get 21 in the second half. They need him to put that cape on, turn into a superhero again. He might be doing it. Only two team fouls on Tennessee in this half is also a, a big story. As physical as they are, you've got to continue to drive it if you're South Carolina. Great pass Same from action. Ziegler. Great bound by Cooper. Stop the ball, build a wall right here for Tennessee. These yep. guards are going to turn the corner and get downhill. Cooper into Adu. Off the window and in. Tom, you can smell it. You can see it coming. I mean, Lamont Paris knows the same thing. We can't get back in this game trying to be cute. We've got to be dog-determined, dog-tough, competitive offensive team. Well done by Cooper. Connect rises from the bench. He'll check back in in a moment. Right. Nemo Ziegler says, I got your back. And he throws in his first three of the game. He shoots it just below the clip of Dalton Connect in SEC play. Remember this, Tennessee last year in the NCAA tournament did not have Zakai Ziegler. They also didn't have Dalton Connect. This is a different animal this year, this team in orange. Good hands by Vescovy and another takeaway. Give me, tell me a better set of hands in college basketball guarding the ball than Vescovy. There, there's, there's not one or two. Here's Ziegler off the screen. They do bang it down low with B.J. Mack. Only a ball screen late. They do. Nothing doing a 14-footer. Good look, though. You used the majority of the shot clock. Didn't have a live ball turnover. Johnson gets it back for Mack. Nice hesitation. He really changes speeds well. He's able to draw the foul. It's on the floor. South Carolina showing late life. Is there enough clock left for a comeback? You like KC, they're 17 and 0 at home. Meanwhile, there's some dudes playing college basketball. Jimmy Dyke simply hard to guard. Yeah, well, here's my national hard to guard team. And Jamal Shedd's going to be one of them. It starts obviously with Zach Eady. I mean, the guy's just a monster. He's un unguardable. And so is Dalton Connect, by the way. Those two guys, MVPs of their league. RJ Davis has not been a better small guard in college ball all year. Jamal Shedd, I agree with the coach. He's the best two way guard at the point guard spot that we have in the college game. And I love Tristan Newton. He's on the best team in college basketball, he leads UConn in points, rebounds, and assists his overall game. Those are my national five hard-to-guard dudes as we head into champ week next week. Houston has opened up a three-point lead on UCF on the road, where the Knights have three top 25 wins already this season. Dalton Connect, 22 points on 19 shots. He's hit five of nine from deep. He has been unstoppable on the baseline out of bounds plays. And he gave oh. up a jam to Murray Boyles. Tennessee got lost defensively. Yeah, they, they, there was three switches involved. And the third one, they couldn't quite cover up. And it was on Connect. Connect now guarded by Michi Johnson. Back cut is it there. They'll run him to the top of the key. Vescovy to Ziegler. Beautiful bounce to Adu, gives it up from right underneath. And now Vescovy trapped in the corner, Murray Boyles a steal. A big defensive possession by South Carolina, down 10. Six and a half to go, drive it right, continue to drive it. Cox can cut it to single digits, Vescovy got in the kitchen, Amici Johnson. And that's the first. And the Tennessee guard. And that's just a big physical SEC drive through contact, though, by Michi Johnson. Still just the fourth team foul, so you got to stay aggressive because you want to score with the clock stopped if you're South Carolina around the five minute mark if you can get there. Well, Lamont Paris had a great description of what makes Michi Johnson great. He said he's confident and consistent. Mm. Right gives it back to him. Shot clock at 10. You told me the same thing at lunch today about me. <laughs> just, a, just a common phrase I, that people toss around. I guess it is. I left out your humbleness. I don't know how I missed it. <laughs> Another one on Vescovy. That's his second. I love the game plan, though, by South Carolina, understanding we've got to drive it. Even if it's full body help, drag the officials into this game. And now the 15 foul by Tennessee creeping closer and closer to that bonus are the Gamecocks. 
what a play. Tom, what a play by Zakai Ziegler. A one-man press on the baseline out of bounds under defense. Tennessee with a takeaway and kind of slow South Carolina down, a team that's made each of its last three. We have not seen one possession of the 1-3-1, which flipped the game for South Carolina here Saturday against Florida. Nietzsche Johnson thought he stripped it, so did everybody else not wearing orange in this building. Instead, it's the first on the South Carolina guard. Time and time again, Rick Barnes has gone to that. I, I love the description. I heard it a couple of weeks ago by a coach that NASCAR action coming with speed right into a turn, right into a curve, getting that momentum coming downhill. Connect to the free throw line after the face rake, and he's got another one coming. He's got 21. Tip off your weekend with the next ESPN NBA Friday doubleheader, 7.30 Eastern. Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs hosts Anthony Edwards and the T-Wolves, followed by Giannis and the Bucks, continuing their West Coast swing against LeBron and the Lakers. Coverage begins with NBA countdown at 7 o'clock. You know what's interesting about Dalton Connect? Everything. He's taken a lot of shots defensively. On Synergy, he's the 23rd best defender in the SEC out of, out, of, out of all the dudes that play now he's the sixth best defender on the best defensive team in the country but 23rd overall is not bad and he's really good guarding the pick and roll action and he's really good in isolation as a defender and he is elite on the offensive end H.E. Johnson left it short look at Murray Boyles out to Cooper yeah. Carolina needed that one it deserves to go in if you can't clean up the miss for Tennessee the next one deserves to go in and a shot of energy back into the building. Here he is, the superstar, the main character of the night, Dalton Connect. The Greeley Breeze has never smelt better. The Northern Colorado transfer going to work again. Carolina able to get it and looking to whittle this lead down again if Dalton connect can get to the rim and release it with his left that's one thing but that's a very very difficult tough two that he tried to make skip all the way to the corner for Mac H.G. E. Johnson launches that's off and she has gone three and a half minutes with a bucket jam it's a possession game right now for Rick Barnes He's got a nine-point lead, four and a half to go. Run the clock and make sure Dalton Connect stays involved right now offensively. A lot of late clock shots coming up for Tennessee. Bad foul. That caught with his hand in the cookie jar. It's a second on B.J. Mack. I say bad foul because you're fouling, what, 30 feet from the rim? Yeah. And I believe the shot clock was down to single digits. And now Zakai Ziegler, who is as good of a closeout guard from the free throw line in college ball that we have, steps to the stripe for the Vols. 71% on the season. Two for two tonight. Michi Johnson gets a breather. Johnson has been the catalyst for South Carolina offensively. Studi has hit a couple of big threes. We'll see who they turn to the last four and a half minutes and how long Michi Johnson sits. Clutch two for two. You might as well just two, put two points on the board if it's around that four minute mark or less for Zakai Ziegler. Michi catching his breath. Cooper guarded by Ziegler. Sean Cooper eight points tonight. He had 18 in the first matchup. A South Carolina win on Rocky Top. Kobe Wright in the paint. And he draws the third from Vescovy. And Vescovy gambled that time, trying to reach behind and allowed Wright, who's a, a jump shooter, to make a pretty good play off the bounce. Vescovy is high IQ, but this reach right there allows Jacoby Wright to pivot to that restricted arc and get to the front of the rim. Tennessee 4.07 away from an SEC regular season type. Here's Jacoby Wright at the free throw. South Carolina is only two for five from the free throw line tonight. Mayshack returns. Best to be sits with three personal. Well, Rick Barnes puts Mayshack back in the game, his best defender. I've been talking to Mayshack all year long about, well, hey, when are you and I going to go one on one? <laughs> and walking out of the building today after shoot around, he looked at me and said, a lot of dudes have tried. They never recovered from it. <laughs> they never recovered from it, is how he put it. 
I believe him. He had the play of the game to key the Tennessee comeback in Tuscaloosa on Saturday after a big three with a steal. One of the best defenders in the game, Ziegler, gives it up. Adu's had a rough second half and they got in on him. Here's James with four. Connect with one. Got it off. And an air ball, shot clock violation. Carolina trailing by 10, 3.36 to play. Will Connect and Tennessee wrap it up, or can the Gamecocks keep this race alive? There are any seniors there. <laughs> Plenty of seniors in rough. They just sit right behind us. By the way, Kentucky 100 points six times this season. It's the most since the national championship team of 1996. With all that talent at Kentucky, Dalton Connect has more 25-point games this year than all of Kentucky's guys wow. combined. Think about that. That's how good this Jimmy kid has been. And this is what's at stake right now with 3.36 to go. Can Tennessee close it out and get that SEC regular season title and move up to the fourth one seed overall? Every bracket will project them if they know what they're doing to that one seed line if Rick Barnes's guys are able to close this thing out. Last time they won regular season outright, Chris Lofton and Wayne Chisholm were the stars. Bruce Pearl was coaching. And they went 3 0 against South Carolina that season in the 07 08 year. Ichi Johnson off the bench, hoists the three and tracks down the miss thanks to the tip. Now he's downhill. Now he finishes. Just stay with it. I mean, first of all, the next team foul on Tennessee are in the bonus. A big time loose ball gathered by South Carolina to stay in this game. without a bucket for Tennessee wide open a do oh, I was gonna say why did he bounce it but he did it to, to kind of ry rhythm dribble himself to that left paw pound that thing inside when the game's at stake what a pressure release is a do H.E. Johnson takes the ball and the ball is saved by South Carolina here's Mack yep. hey! P.J. Mack with his second triple South Carolina uses a timeout they close within seven. What a scene in Columbia. B.J. Mack is a key guy, Tom, because he gets good looks. If he rises up to be a 40% shooter for the rest of the month of March, it is a good sign for the Gamecocks. Rise, release, rotation, and the door is still open. City is popping now. You can catch five college basketball games Saturday on ESPN and the app, including a couple of Sonic blockbusters. Number 14, Kansas, goes to Rocket City to take on number one, Houston, followed by a tobacco road rivalry. Number seven, North Carolina, ninth ranked Duke at 6:30 Eastern. Carolina going for a sweep against Duke. Armando Bake out of 25 and 10 in their first matchup. Tom Waddle has been rocking tonight. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Every arena we've gone to this year in big games, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, it has felt different than years past. And we talked about earlier this league has five of the top 17 teams right now in the AP poll. I think there's six teams that go to Nashville, maybe seven with a, with a chance to win it. I think the big picture with this league, three in the top ten nationally in scoring, and yet we're seeing a great defensive effort from no both doubt. sides tonight, a game that's in the 50s with two and a half to play. Yeah, the offensive firepower in this league is what has elevated right now. They are second to none. And now Tennessee with a lot of game pressure on them, but this is an old, experienced, mature team that did not get rattled at Alabama. Will they get rattled in this building with 2.30 to go? Carolina showed the press for the first time. 2.25 to play. You can let run on the baseline. Yeah, but you, get, you, you gave Connect the option to go either way. He loves this side of the floor in an isolation game. Guarded by Jacoby Wright at just 6-2. Turnaround jumper. Money. That's why you go to Dalton Connect on this side of the floor. He backs you down with that 6-6 frame, just rises up and gets good vision of that rim. Michi Johnson crosses over Ziegler, finds Cooper. Yes, what sir. a duo they are. Yes, sir. Timeout, South Carolina, 156 to play. It's a six-point game. We'll catch our breath. Back to Columbia in just a moment. Well, he's a 49% three-point shooter. Zakai Ziegler 
gets beaten off the bounce just enough to force Vescovy to come to that elbow protection. And that paint touch right there with the right foot frees up Talon Cooper. Vescovy probably second guessing why did I come off? Twos right now aren't nearly as detrimental as a three. And the building once again rises up in noise. It rises up in heat and it rises up in pressure on Tennessee. Here's Connect working to the block brought up by Johnson now. Not a great pass, tips it back to Ziegler. And this is his game. Isolation on this side. Three ball, no. Rebounded by South Carolina's Murray Boyle. Never tried to attack it. Dalton Connect settled for a long jumper. Johnson crossed him over, then forgot the basketball. Murray Boyles is going to the free throw line. And the Gamecocks have missed multiple shots at the rim in this game. And he just had a lot to do with it. They've also missed the ones that you've got to make. And the guy that goes left and lefter stops the clock, gets himself to the free throw line. Carolina just 9 of 17 at the rim to your point. Here's Colin Murray Boyles. Local product that played at AC Floor High School here in Columbia. Four star recruit. And he has blossomed into a superstar. Only a case of mononucleosis kept him on the yeah. shelf early. Kind of stunted his ability to impact the game in November and December. Cooper the rebound. Five point deficit for Carolina as we approach the one minute mark. Michi Johnson left Ziegler hangs and hits. Three point game. And off for Connect. Guarded by Cooper with 10. Cooper stays in front. Now with seven. Here's Adu all alone. And a smart but hard foul from Michi Johnson. How about Rick Barnes goes to Dalton Connect as the pick and roll handler. Why? Because he's 6'6". And he can get the pass out of his hands into the roll action of the seven foot Adu. If that's Zakai Ziegler or Santi Vescovi, that double team probably takes the pass away. And now Jonas Adu, a big, big free throw attempt. Adu just six. Makes it a two possession game with 47 seconds left. Defensive standout Jemai Meshack replaces Connect. Tough teams and tough guys, though they close you out regardless of the percentage on the year. One of two from the line, rebounded by Johnson. Eugene Johnson hit the big three Saturday against Florida for the win. No whistle on that drive. And then a whistle for a reach in. After Adu got it, and he'll be shooting at the other end. How about the number of orange jerseys, Tom Hart, that got back and built a wall. They got inside the painted area of the floor and forced just a lot of traffic for Johnson to try to work through. I like the aggressiveness, but I love the big orange wall defensively in their conversion defense by Tennessee. E.J. Mack returns. He'll replace Murray Boyles. He's a three-point threat. Justin Ganey and Rick Barnes talking on the Tennessee sideline. 38 seconds away from a regular season title. Missed the front end. Door's still open for Carolina. Cooper into Mayshek, elite defender. Ball fake got him up, no whistle on the jumper. Adu the rebound. 27 seconds left, and Tennessee going back to the free throw line. Should, and now ice being thrown onto the floor. Should that have been a whistle on the jumper? I'd have to see the review of it. I mean, if you put Mayshak in because he is your clamp down defender, and Mayshak gets bumped off the action, and Taylon Cooper, if anything, Cooper, I think he's jumping to his right. I think it's a good no call. The step back right there by Cooper, and he jumps into the side of Mayshak, I think just enough for the officials to say play on. Not a popular call. I'm going to say it's the right call. I agree. And so free throws come and they're going to look. I'm not sure exactly what they're looking at unless they're looking at.
the foul after the three point shot. They didn't call it. They can't go back and call it now. And perhaps cleaning up the clock situation. And so two shots coming for Santiago Vescovi, who in his career has been money at the free throw line in the last two minutes. 80% on the season, it jumps to 90% late in the game. I remember I told you that a couple of years ago. Yeah, <laughs> and it still stands. <laughs> I'm still using your best stuff. <laughs> Colin Murray boils back on the floor for South Carolina. Davis takes a seat. Now 27 seconds away from an outright league title. Two teams that are built a little bit different, but similar in terms of the ruggedness, the physicality, the emphasis on defense. Still time, man. Rush this thing up the floor. This is the only two points of the night for Vescovy. Carolina uses some clock. Michi Johnson, well defended, goes for a deuce and gets a foul. It'll go to the line with 18 seconds remaining. It's a third on Mayshack. Mayshack goes with a verticality play. He goes straight up and the contact gets Johnson to the free throw line. 81% on the season for Michi Johnson. Connect returns. Carolina counters with Zachary Davis. Down six with 18 to play. You got to have a make, and you got a face guard, you got to gamble defensively of your South Carolina. Gamecocks with four steals so far tonight, not a big number. Tennessee with two timeouts left. Zakai so Ziegler has a clock in his head. He doesn't rush right now to get press alignment set up. Good job by du Double Z. And he'll hold it. They haven't fouled him yet. And Amici Johnson, a little late getting there, may have cost him a couple of ticks. Tennessee looking for what would be its 11th SEC regular season title in program history in the sixth outright the first since 2008 Rick Barnes went over 800 wins this year and I would argue that he has been at his best this season his interaction with his guys the trust level that he has the timeout at Alabama on Saturday to close the game out trusting Santi Vescovi and he's got a real team that's capable of getting the final four, if not beyond. Tennessee's never been there. Ziegler makes it a three possession game with the free throw. Might be academic. Johnson's going to try to get one up quick. He'll drive and with the left sneaks it in. Big second half for Michi Johnson. 6.6 .6 remaining. James quickly fouled. He'll go to the line with six seconds left. You mentioned Barnes 800th win. He's sitting at 802 right now. He's one of just 15 coaches in NCAA Division I history with over 800 wins. Now, talking with Rick Barnes today, a, a, a young coaching staff recruits, an older coaching staff evaluates, and they evaluated Dalton Connect different than anybody else in the college game. Dalton Connect was judged as a top 40, maybe top 50 guy in the portal. And Rick Barnes and his older staff that evaluates you instead of recruiting you said, we see something special in this kid. And he is the reason, one of the main reasons that Tennessee is going to walk out of here with an SEC regular season title. They will be a one seed in the projected brackets starting tomorrow morning. Three is off the mark. The follow slam means nothing. It won't count anyway. And the Tennessee Volunteers have wrapped up an SEC outright regular season title. Connect will get a ring, but they think there is much more in store for this veteran team that now has a go-to score. Without a doubt. And, and South Carolina, to me, is Sweet 16 good as well. They just got beat by a better club tonight. And the, the maturity of this team, but I said it in the second half, Tom, Tennessee last year in the NCAA tournament did not have Zakai Ziegler. They did not have Dalton Connect. You're arguably your two best players playing at a high level make this Tennessee team a real threat in that NCAA tournament. They are, in fact, reviewing the final play on the follow dunk, and even though it won't impact the outcome of this game, the basket does not count. Song. And you heard him say it does not count, came after the buzzer. 
What a game for Dalton Connect. He took this thing over and he was unstoppable for a run there where he finishes with 24. South Carolina's defense was taken apart by Connect. Tennessee's defense was the difference and the Volunteers win the SEC regular season title with one game to play. What a night in Columbia for Jimmy Dykes. I'm Tom Hart. Now it's time to get you to the studio for plenty more to come including Iowa State and BYU. Here's Kevin Connors.